welcome to this update video. I hope you're doing good. So we're going to be talking about both of these tropical disturbances marked by the National Hurricane Center. So we see one highlighted in orange that's indicating a medium chance of formation and this is going to be heading to the Caribbean. So as it approaches, it could develop and it could further intensify in the Caribbean Sea. And then well behind it, just off the African coast, is a tropical wave that is also marked where we could see some development take place of it next week. So we're going to be looking at both of these systems we're going to be looking at what models are showing as well as the environmental conditions so going on to the satellite imagery here we can see this cluster of showers and thunderstorms associated with that first tropical disturbance well offshore right now and then uh, we can see those little blobs out there as well associated with that next tropical wave. As we head into the Caribbean, we can see some scattered showers, thunderstorms around across parts of the Lesser Antilles. And even as we head up to the vicinity of the Bahamas, we can see lots of thunderstorms ongoing this morning, even near the Cayman Islands and Cuba and towards parts of Central America. So it's been quite wet for some persons, but uh, it's gonna be a pretty sunny morning for many of us. As we go on to the rainfall forecast for today, as we saw, there's a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity near the Bahamas. So there could be some decent rainfall activity throughout today across most islands. Not as much rain for the Turks and Caicos. And parts of Cuba and even for uh, Grand Cayman, there could be some decent rainfall today as well. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms across Jamaica, especially as we head into the afternoon. And it's, uh, it's going to be a similar story for Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and through the Lesser Antilles. And as we head down to Northern South America for parts of Northern Colombia, sections of Venezuela, as well as Guyana and Suriname experience some additional showers and thunderstorms and even for Central America where it has been quite active. No doubt about that part there in the Navy Sea Islands likely to remain in the clear with very little rainfall activity to no rain expected today. Now, going on to our disturbances in a little bit more detail. So here we have our first one. This is the kind, uh, kind of the one that we want to focus on for the coming days. Now, it is given that 50% chance of formation. So the chance has increased since my update video yesterday. At this time, yesterday was at 20%. Now it's up to 50%. And as it approaches, it's likely to be in a generally conducive environment that would allow for gradual development and intensification of it. So it uh, is likely to approach the Lesser Antilles as we head into Monday, go into Tuesday, and then uh, by the middle of the week, it's likely to cross into the Caribbean and could be making its way to the Central Caribbean around that time. As for the second disturbance off of Africa, that one is given a 20% chance of formation and models have kind of been favoring this, making a curve up and out. So as I said, the one that we really want to focus on is the uh, tropical wave that is a bit closer to the Caribbean. So let's go ahead and take a look at some model data to see what they're expecting. And then we're going to be moving on to the conditions ahead and how conducive the atmosphere is for development. So looking at the ensembles, we're starting out with Euro and this goes out to Thursday of next week, Thursday evening. Here we can see all of these members for that uh, first tropical disturbance given that medium formation chance. As for the second one, we can see that cluster of members as well and a third cluster. So again, we're heading into September. It's not surprising to see uh, that, you know, we have these members here showing multiple systems potentially out there at the time, not a surprise at all. But as for the Caribbean system, it may enter the region and further intensify, maybe even into a hurricane in the Caribbean Sea. So the Lesser Antilles definitely have to be on watch. And then even other areas down the road, such as maybe Jamaica, will have to keep watch as well for late uh, the mid to latter part of next week when the system could bring impacts. And as for that next uh, disturbance behind it, We'll see what eventually happens. Again, a little curve is expected in the track of it. And then as we move on to GFS, this goes out to the similar time frame. Here we can see that the different members for GFS, not as much as Europe, but they are all expecting that we are likely to see the system move into the Caribbean. And uh, we can see that next cluster for the second disturbance. And overall, the next two names on the list for the hurricane season are Francine and Gordon. So we could potentially see both of these intensify into uh, uh, tropical 
cyclones and acquire those names once they reach the threshold to be considered tropical storms. As it pertains to conditions, let's go on to that. So looking at the sea surface temperatures, it is very warm. So I showed you guys this map yesterday. Uh, nothing much has changed from it and it's very warm. The environment is very favorable right now, especially in the Caribbean and the Gulf to see a rapid intensification take place because not only is it warm at the surface, but also beneath the surface, there's a pretty decent depth of warm water. So lots of energy is around to really help these systems to intensify. And then as it pertains to the dry air, we're looking at the dry air map and the yellow shadings, the oranges, uh, reds and pink, they're all indicating the dry air. So the more vibrant the shading we're seeing, more dry air is present. There's a higher concentration of it. So there you can see the cluster of uh, showers, thunderstorms associated with the disturbance. And we don't see a whole lot of dry air out ahead of it because it's going to move generally westward and we're not seeing like a... Uh, plenty of dry air there is some around no doubt but it's not very very much so it is going to have its window of opportunity to develop and in terms of the uh, wind shear now so when the upper level winds are strong that interferes with development when they are weak the environment is more favorable for development so here we're looking at this map it may be a little bit confusing but we can see the white outline of the different land areas the caribbean uh the americas as well and then we can see uh these quickly lines all around so the red shadings indicate where the upper level winds are strong which means the environment there is unfavorable neutral is indicated by those yellow lines and then a favorable atmosphere in terms of the upper level winds is indicated by those green lines look ahead of it even looking into the caribbean we're seeing all of these green lines around indicating that the environment ahead is also favorable in terms of the upper level winds so we can see that the environment ahead is just generally conducive and we should see the system eventually getting itself together and it's definitely sustaining more activity compared to yesterday so we'll see what happens with it over the weekend and eventually as i said uh the lesser antilles should be on watch so early next week is going to be the time when it's likely to impact the islands so of course guys i'm going to be keeping you posted on both of these disturbances and that's basically what I wanted to share with you in this update video for today. So that's it for right now. And I do trust and hope you found this video to be informative. But if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I will respond to you when I have the chance to do so. And remember to always be otherwise.